All right, I think we're on line. Woohoo! Welcome everybody to today's stream. Let's get everything set up. But hey, how's it going? Let me get this back up there. <clears throat> All right, now let me see if I can bring up the chat. Bum, bum. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are all having a good Saturday. Make sure my audio was turned off so we don't hear me chatting in the background. I'm gonna put this over here so I can see the chat better. There we go. <clears throat> all right, welcome, welcome. Whew, it has been a busy week for me. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I'm excited that I was able to do a stream today. I thought I could either post this, do this last night and post this as today's video, or I could just go ahead and do it live. But uh, so I thought I would go ahead and do it live so that we could have a stream and get a Saturday video all at the same time. Yay. Um, so what am I doing today? Today I just finished uploading a new coloring page pack to my Etsy shop, which I, I I did one a little while ago when I did my last collab video. Um, but last year I uploaded a new coloring page once every month. So it feels really weird not uploading a new coloring pages all the time. So this one is a horse or unicorn coloring pack. And it has five different unicorns that you can, they're all the same position but they have different themes to them so these are four of them so you, you get the plain unicorn you get rainbow which has rainbow and rains and like a rainbow coming out of her horn you have music which has like all the music notes and then you have flora here which has kind of like vines and flowers and things like that and then the last one is this one, which is patterns, which has just kind of some fun doodling patterns on that as well. So you get all five of these. And I, I haven't got a chance to do a test. Like I like to color them um, to make a kind of a sample piece for the Etsy photos. And I was going to go ahead and do that last night and record that as a video and then make it for today's video. But then I thought, I'll just wait <laughs> and uh, do it with you guys today. So. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm also going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to be coloring these little ones. Those are just for a photo shoot. I actually printed these two here off onto sticker paper. So I'm going to color these on sticker paper and make stickers out, the, out of them. And then if I have time, I have, I'm have i testing out this set here of the Raspberry Fairy, which was the one that... I was working on it a couple streams ago and then the stream got weird on me and so I had to cut it off, but you were there for the drawing part of it. Um, anyway, I finished coloring her and I printed her off on sticker paper and so I need to finish these up as well. So I thought if I have time, I'll do that as well. Anyway, so the fun thing about these uh, pictures here is one is the theme so that you can kind of color them however you want but I really like the plain one just in case someone wants to do like a more natural unicorn or which I think is really a fun idea to create your own unicorn design as well so yeah um, and if, for any of you who are asking about where to get them I have a link to my Etsy shop in the description of this live stream so if you guys want to pick up a set of these to get their digital copies so once you purchase them then you can print them off at home as uh, so you get all five of them I think it's three dollars for all five of them which is pretty cool so anyway so I have to decide you guys have to help me do should I do this one first the patterns one and then do the original one or should I do the original one first and then the patterns one oh yeah Ugh. I have to get a drink of water. Hang on. I'm thinking about going with the pattern one first and then kind of letting us ponder what theme I should go with for this one. 
I think that'd be kind of fun. Well, I think I might be, I might be doing that. And I think that's what you guys are kind of leaning towards as well. So let's do that. I'm going to put these someplace where I won't lose them because that's totally like me to stick those someplace and be like, where did I put all those rest of those things that I didn't remember? Oh no, now everyone's voting for original. But I'm going to go with patterns first. Um, just then we can think about it. And then maybe we'll have like a little vote on what the theme for the original one should be first. Yay, and I have my, my the chat here, so I'm going to try to read the chat as much as possible while I'm, while I'm working. So um, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, make sure to ask them in the chat. So let's start. Um, I, a big question I get is what kind of sticker paper do I use? For this set here, and I should probably put this in a link. They're just half sheet shipping labels that I purchased off of um, Amazon. So they just come in a pack like this. And I like them because the shipping labels have really good stick on the back. So when you stick your stickers, they don't fall off really easily. Um, and But the top part is just like a regular paper. So you can add any kind of color. You can do color pencils, uh, markers, um, crayon with these I wouldn't do probably watercolor with it just because it might I don't think the paper is that tough um, and then what I do after I finish coloring them uh, is I take some clear contact paper and I cover the tops of them with clear contact paper which I'll show you later on in the video or in the stream um, and that's how I make my stickers so I had where is that? Hang on. okay so here is my sketchbook. So this is one of the stickers here that I colored with Copic markers on this label paper, and I haven't covered it. This one here is the same label paper that I that I colored, but I colored it with contact paper, so it gives it a nice shine. It also gives it a lot more durability. It's not going to scratch off or anything. This one here, I actually bought glossy photo paper, and I was really excited about it, and I printed it off, and it looks okay, but there should be black in here and I don't know if you guys can see when it first printed off there was black but all I had to do was just go like this with my finger and all the black would just wipe right off like down between the berries should be black her eyes should be black it's just like a really light gray now and even if I let the ink set for 24 hours it just wasn't working with this with my photo ink and it would just wipe off so unfortunately actually glossy paper is not working for me so I'm still trying to torque that out so yeah so did I draw these horses yes I did I stayed up really late last night too late last night finishing them up so I wanted to have them finished for today so yeah I have a lot of different videos where I talk about drawing horses and stuff like that so if you want more step-by-step -step on drawing horses you can definitely check those out all right so this is my copic coloring chart which i will I have two of them so i have this one and then i have the hex chart so let's look here i like this one because it kind of clumps the colors together by what looks good rather than just by color families which is kind of nice I'll just let you guys know if you ask me to in the in the comments to like give you a shout out or to say your name or say a word I, I don't do those because if I do it just becomes insane uh, stream of me just saying really weird words so if you have a question and I happen to see it I will try to answer questions so that would be cool Okay, so let's see. I want to make this part here like a dark, kind of a dark purpley color. I'm going to think I'm going to start off with an RV66. RV66, where are you? If I can find my RV66, that's a 99, that's a 69. There it is. Raspberry. Ooh. Do I have a favorite Copic color? Mm. I like um favorite Copic color to color with just kind of depends. Like 
of favorite colors. Probably my favorite skin tone color is I like the R20 for any kind of blushes and things like that, which is nice. Do you have any recommendations for where to get Copic markers? If you buy them straight in the store, you're going to be paying full mark, market price. Um, so I would avoid that unless you have a really good coupon. Sometimes um, you'll get like the 50% off coupons from like Joan Fabrics or, but I don't think, not a lot of Joan Fabrics sell Copics. Um, Michaels does though. And I think Hobby Lobby and other little craft stores. So I wouldn't buy without like a coupon from a store. If you buy them online, just price check around. Um, Blick, I find, has a really good selection and they're a fairly good price. Their coupons don't apply to them. So if you have a 50% like or 40% off coupon, it does not generally apply to Copics. One of the best places I bought them was a craft store locally that was going out of business and had all their Copics for 75% off. Do I ever use toned paper? I do. In fact, I was thinking about doing a video on toned paper coming up in the next week or two. One thing you want to know about this paper, if you decide to print it off on label paper and you use markers, is there's a little bit of feathering with it. So if you lay your Copic marker down really hard on it, really up close to your thin, thin line, um, it's going to bleed over and feather over into the next line. So I lay the color just next to the line, but leave just like this little tiny gap and then just kind of push it in. So for tight, tiny spaces, especially if you have a really juicy um, Copic marker, it can be a little challenging. So just lightly tap the marker on there and the, the color goes. Can I do a video on kind of how to mix and shade with markers? I have a couple different videos where I show how I do them. I haven't done a specific video on like specifically how to color or work with specific Copics. And no, we won't be using metallic paints. <laughs> um, my favorite brand of metallic paints, uh, the only one I have right now is the Fine Tech, but they're amazing. Can I make a 2017 Beauty and the Beast themed drawing or painting? I tried. I mean, I didn't try. I succeeded. I, I worked for like four or five hours on this bell piece. Um, though I guess I don't know that it was totally inspired by the 2017, but I was doing a bell piece and then I raised the video. But I guess it wasn't exactly. 2017 bell because I guess she's a little different. Who is my favorite YouTube artist? And now you can't ask me to say that. I got way too many, too many people that I watch. Should do a a shout out video one time where I just take you through all the different art YouTubers that I watch. That'd be kind of fun. By the way, how is the audio? Didn't ask you guys to check. Check with me. Do I use Prismacolor or color pencils? Yes, I do. I do have some Faber-Castells, but Prismacolor colored pencils are the ones that I first purchased when I bought my first set of professional grade um, color art supplies, and I invested in those, and so which is what I stuck with. But I like them. Do I think cheap materials can work better than expensive ones? Depends on the materials uh, on their own. Um, I will say that you can spend a ton of money on really expensive materials. But if you have not practiced and learned how to use 
art or draw or you know they're not going to help once you know how to draw or color or shade they can improve your art but they can't make you better like my seven-year-old niece I could let her color with my Copic markers and she will create the same kind of art that she will create with her Crayola markers because she's still learning. But once you learn how the product works and you know, yeah, you have to do the hard work first. So in that sense, if you've didn't done the hard work, you can make cheaper art supplies turn out beautifully. There's some YouTubers out there that all they use is Crayola color pencils and they make amazing artwork. It's fantastic. this is the part of the video that I was recording this I would speed this up because this is time consuming but I think sometimes it's fun to see artists working in real time because when you speed it up it looks really easy and then it, it tends to discourage you maybe when you see an artist that just effortlessly creates their piece but what you don't realize is the minute and a half that you watched them create this painting or picture really encompassed hours of their life and i find even with my time lapses unless you know what you're looking for you don't see my mistakes and me fixing my mistakes i think it was the last video i did where i was talking about watercolor and how if watercolor touches another color that's still wet it will bleed over and I was talking about it and actually during the video you can see where my two watercolors touched and the pink of my flower bled into the green of my flower stem and I talked about fixing it but unless you really knew that that's what I was doing you wouldn't have even probably noticed that I fixed it you know or that I made the mistake and, and fixed it so time-lapse are good for that just to see the full process what is my favorite type of watercolor paper I use um, use a couple different brands um, for just regular watercoloring I like Hansen works good um, I also like blocked paper which is the kind of paper that comes on a pad and it's glued down on almost all four sides except for a little section. Excuse me. And then when you're done, you kind of peel it off. What type of Copics would I recommend? Um, I really like the brush nib myself. So either a sketch, which is this one, or chows. Chows also have the brush nib on them as well the only th and they're a little bit cheaper too so if you're just kind of wanting to test them out chows are the way to go the only th difference with chow is that their barrel is much smaller this part here which holds the ink so you're going to run out of ink a lot faster um, i knew that i was if i was going to make the jump into copic markers i wanted to make the full plunge and that's why i went just straight with sketch markers because otherwise, I mean, I feel refill these quite often. Um, and I knew I would be refilling them twice as fast if I got the chows as well. I don't know what a Zugo is, so I'm going to comment on how to draw a Zugo. I don't 
I don't know it. Your hand smells like horses? That's cool. You must have horses nearby. How fast does a chow ink go down? Um, I don't know because I've never specifically used one all the way up. I've played around with them and that's how I know that they they work the same way. Oh, I get ink all over me. Hmm. Um, like their brush nibs are the same. If I use this like on a big piece, like I did the Alluring Darkness, and I use a lot of like the blues, I think it was this shade of blue, B32, I used a lot of this. And I think it, I was able to do the whole picture without having to fill this up. Um, but it probably used about half of the marker for that piece. But I mean, I pretty much covered almost the whole piece with this um, blue. It probably would have used a whole chow up. I think. I'm not sure. I've just been told that, and obviously looking at them, you can see that the barrels are much smaller. I think I had my sketch markers for a good six months before I, I started drying up a couple of my markers and needed to get them refilled. If you have any scrapbooking shops, like, um, I don't know, like the corporate, like, you know, if you go to Hobby Lobby to buy scrapbook stuff, but um, like private owned scrapbooking shops, check with them. Some of them do Copic refills, like you just go in and they'll refill your Copic. So it's definitely worth asking about. Um, I did that before. That was the shop that went out of business. I guess I didn't refill it up with them. So they went Actually, they were doing very well. She was just retiring. Um, but I would go there and for 99 cents, they would refill my Copic for me, which was awesome. But then they went out of business, so I bought as many of their refills as I could and have slowly been purchasing my own refills. But I just realized I was reorganizing everything. I double bought a refill. Now... I can understand double buying a marker because after a while you get a lot of markers. Or, but how does someone go and double buy ink? I don't know how that's possible, but it is because I did it. So there we go. So I have a lot of G21. So I am kind of considering if I ever get all of the Copic refills to start kind of doing refilling business on the side in my my town since there's no place that does it anymore. I have a local art store and I think they would let me come in, go there and refill people's Copic markers, help us pay for my Copic refills. So that would be fun. But I still have a long way to go before I have all the refills. Do I have Facebook Messenger? Yes, if you go to my art a la carte Facebook page. You can message me there. Do I use any water-based markers I have in the past? All right, so there's the base paint there. I had a little bit of bleed over right there, but I can fix that up with a with a gel pen later. But I got a marker on me. So if you just squirt like a little, this is rubbing alcohol, and it just cleans it right up. All right, so now we get to begin planning out some puzzles inside. So we have really dark, so I want to bring in some really bright colors. So let's pull in some yellow. So I'm going to use Y18. 
which is lightning yellow. So what is my real name? My real name is Valerie Flynn. I know I never introduce myself. I always just introduce myself as Ariel Akai, which is so impersonal. I'm sorry, guys. What is my favorite animal? That is like the top question asked in every single stream. <laughs> Um, I don't really have a favorite, like, overall animal. I really like cats. Everyone who hears me answer this question is going to hear me answer, like, a different animal every time. I'm like, last time she said it was a panda. The time before that she said it was a sea turtle. And you would all be correct because I have lots of animals that I like. I like horses. I like, I like all kinds of animals. Do I have any animals that I don't like? Hmm. Leopard seals. Yeah, I don't like leopard seals. I talked about that in one of the streams as well. I sound Russian? I hope I'm not Russian. I'm trying to take my time. But I'm just a joke. Got it? Bad jokes with heart on the cart. What am I going to do with this horse once it's done? I'm going to turn it into a sticker and stick it on something. So a fun thing, um, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the stream, if you guys are just now joining, but this is printed on shipping label paper, so it's actually going to be a sticker when it's done. And you can do this your, yourself, like by get ship, shipping label um, paper and you can print off your own stickers you know, or draw your own stickers on them. Or if you want this, I do sell um, sticker packs, which I print them off for you guys and send, send them to you. But... Like, I have these, this uh, horse print on my Etsy shop for sale. And if you purchase that and you wanted to make your own stickers, you could print this off onto sticker paper and then turn it into your own colorable sticker, which would be fun. Oh, my name sounds Russian. Oh, well, that would be cool. I don't know the origins of Valerie. Hmm, I'll have to look that up. Who am I? Where did I come from? What do I record my, what do I use to record my drawing videos? Uh, I have a Sony Handycam HD camera that I have on a little tripod and use that to record. Um, if you want to see it up close, you can go to my, oh goodness, was it, hmm. I think it was my last studio tour video, which is really old. I think I show it there. How long have I been drawing or painting for? I have been drawing and painting, well, drawing and coloring and things like that since I was a kid. But seriously started focusing on it when... I was in my teens, and then the last about 10 years or so, really began to push myself to strengthen my skills. Skills. Did I say snow leopard? That's what I didn't like. I love snow leopards. It was a leopard seal. Did I say that? I want to make sure that I clarify, because I love snow leopards. It was leopard seals that I don't care for because they're they're creepy. And I think probably not from this world. Yeah. Would your art channel fail if you recorded with your phone? Depends on how good your camera phone is. Um, and one big recommendation I would have for it is to prop it up on something so that you're not holding it while you're drawing. I find a lot of um, artists, um, 
can do that. They hold the camera while they're drawing. And so it kind of makes you motion sickness. Makes you motion sickness? No, gives you motion sickness. Um, so if you prop it up, I, I know a lot of YouTube artists that, that do that. And make sure your lighting is good so that people can see what's going on. A lot of times if you have like really harsh lighting, you'll have this really strong cast shadow. Um, or if you have the light shining down on you. So the trick is not to have the light shining on you. Have it reflecting off of something else. So if you guys can see, and I did this in a video a little while ago. I don't remember which one it was called. But I have my lamp reflecting off of my ceiling, right? You can't see it. It's right, right here is my lamp. And then it's reflecting off the ceiling, which is kind of arched down. I'm, I have, I'm in the attic, so I have sloping ceilings. And then it diffuses the light. But there's a lot of other things you can do to diffuse it and make it not as harsh. So um, and that helps you not to have that strong cast shadow. What I would recommend is if you're wanting to see how your videos will turn out, just make a couple test videos. Maybe not so much even to put up on a channel, but just to test them out and see how they look. And then, and then um, you know, kind of watch them back and see if they're, um, see if they look good to you. And then if they do, then go ahead and post them on YouTube. And believe me, people will tell you if it's, if it's, not good. How do I draw more realistic? Practice. Um, and drawing off of life. Um, like looking at reference photos or looking at the real thing. So my sister is on. She's wanting to know if you guys can hear sound because she can't hear sound. So let me know in the comments if you guys can hear sound. I'm hoping you guys can, because if not, I'm just sitting here talking to myself, which was, I mean, not that I don't enjoy hearing myself talk, but, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of me talking. Do I have a website? Yes. My website is um, www.goartalacart.com. Go artalacart.com because someone else took artalacart.com and I was sad, so I had to make that work. Yay, you guys can hear it. That's good. I'm so glad. I might have to switch over to colored pencils because some of this detail is so tiny that my markers are not doing well with it. When I drew these, I meant for them to be, you know, like full sheets of paper, so... Though it's doable to color them at half sheet size, you'd want something that keeps a really good fine point. And the brush nibs on these can get pretty fine, but they're just so juicy that they just want to go blah everywhere. Thanks, George. George said hi. So I'm saying hi to George. And Claudia. Because she says hi, guys. And Art for Fun says, how are you? I'm fine, Art for Fun. Thanks for asking. But my computer just beeped. I don't know why. Hopefully that isn't like, we're shutting down in five seconds. So why did I choose the name Art La Carte? One, it rhymes. And I'm, uh, I love things that rhyme. <laughs> and when you go to a restaurant and you order a la carte, it means that you can get something that normally is like, so you would order roast beef, mashed potatoes, vegetable, vegetables, vegetables, and a salad. But maybe you just wanted the mashed potatoes. Well, you could order them a la carte and just get those. And so I didn't want this just, I wanted this to be a full-fledged art channel. 
but to focus on little portions. So like maybe I do watercolor here, and maybe I do you know drawing here, and maybe I do something fun here. So kind of fit with the, the a la carte part and then it rhymed with art. So I would recommend if you're deciding to make a you know a name for yourself either on YouTube or you know give your, your business art studio a name. Check it out and see how many other people had that great idea because a lot of people thought Art on the Cart was a fun name. So, yeah. When you Google Art on the Cart, a lot of things come up. But I liked the name. I actually have worked at a restaurant before. I worked at Pizza Hut, which I guess isn't the kind of restaurant that you're talking about, but I made pizzas. Lots and lots of pizzas. I still love pizza. That's an amazing thing. One would think I wouldn't like pizza. But I do. So is anybody on spring break or is spring break over? And we had ours last week. And if so, did anyone do anything fun during spring break? How do I choose the colors for this piece? Um, <clears throat> I want them all to be kind of bright and bold, so I'm kind of going with each color family group. So I've got my purples, I got some blue in there, um, yellow, green, and then I'm, I don't know, I don't think I want to go orange. I think I want to keep it all kind of royal rich colors. So I don't know. Oh, I'm just kind of going as I go. <clears throat> a lot of times when I'm doing things in color, they don't end up going well together. I'm going, oh, that didn't end up the greatest. So it is a lot of trial and error and, and blind luck, maybe. <laughs> like, whew. I did that and then it actually didn't turn out bad. Yay! Another trick is if you're doing an area with markers and it's got a lot of detail and you want to color the back part, if you have the back part a lighter shade and then you let that dry, then you can go in with the darker and color the, like the dots in the center um, rather than trying to get in there and color around those dots, which would be crazy insane. Just color it a lighter shade. But I think pretty soon I'm going to switch over to color pencils with this just because um, this detail is getting pretty fine. But I have to decide what color I want to make the main. Hmm. I'm almost thinking about making the main black just so that I have a real because there's just lots of color and stuff. And so I'm thinking black would just kind of bring a focus to the piece. But I think I will lay down a really dark color first and then color black in over top of it so that'll have a little bit of reflection. So somewhere you'd recommend or I where if I were to sell my art. Um, that's a good question. Um, if you're thinking about wanting to create art to sell, first, um, create art that you want to hang up on your wall. Sometimes we, we get really excited about the idea of selling art and we can get kind of lost into that mindset of, 
creating art is kind of like printing our own money. The faster I create art, the, the more I can sell and the more money you'll make as an artist. And so you, you start cheating the pieces of the time that you should put into them. So make a piece of art, not because you think someone's going to buy it, but because you love it. Put the time and effort that you'd want into that piece if you were going to hang it up or own it or if you were going to pay for it. And then if it sells as a bonus... But if not, you still have a great piece of art. And know that building an, an art business takes time. So don't get discouraged if, you know, you say you open up an Etsy shop and you upload your, your items or you, you create a Redbubble shop and things don't sell out right away or at all. I had my um, Redbubble shop up for years before I even made it. A sale and before that I had what was it cafe press yeah I was the only person to buy off of that so it takes time people have to find you and you have to get your your art to the level that it needs to be at so just work hard I guess would be my best advice All right, so we have this purple, which is not going to be the color. It's going to be just a nice purple highlight for the for the mane and tail would be nice. But I'm actually going to make it dark. I don't know if I'm going to go with black. Let's see what color is that. B99, which is agate. How do I come up with my ideas, topics for video tutorials? Um, a lot of them come from you guys, because um, I always read your guys' comments and you guys come up with ingenious ideas. Um, some of them I just try out and then I kind of see what your guys' feedback is. Um, and this isn't for like actual art that I create. These are for videos. Um, and the reason that I really take a lot of what you guys like into heart is because I'm creating these videos for you. Um, so I want to create art videos that you guys enjoy. So I really pay attention to um, the view count for videos, likes, dislikes, um, comments, and, and that really helps me kind of judge where I want to go with my next video. You guys are really good at letting me know really what you guys like. Um, and, and when there's videos that you guys don't like, you gently let me know. It's very, I have, you guys are the best. Because you're not, some some people say that their viewers are really kind of pushy and demanding. And you guys have never been a demanding group. You know, you, you treat each other with respect and I just appreciate that. Now that I've said that, the trolls are going to come. Yeah. But for my art itself, I do, like, if I'm going to do, like, a finished piece, like, when, my, uh, the time piece that I did was for the YouTube Artist Collective, but when I actually f make a piece that I'm going to put hours and hours and hours into, I do those because I love it. I'm not sure there's been very many pieces that I've ever done, um, because I thought it was going to be popular or sell or things like that that's why I don't do a lot of commissions and if I do if I do accept commissions it's um, commissions that I I'm excited to do because I always want to create art because it's something that excites me it's something I want to create I don't want to create art because it's what people want me to create but it's not something I'm excited about because then it loses its magic the fun of creating I think that goes with anything. Like if you're a writer, you should write because it's something that you want to express. It's the stories that you want to tell. And you know, if you were if you're a musician, you want to play because you enjoy it and you want to play the type of music. I hear that so often from musicians that, you know, as you're learning, you're having to play the sheet music or the music chosen by, you know, your instructors. And then when they finally realize that they can pick their music 
Um, it just opens up a whole new world, a new love for for their their talent. I was listening to Lindsay Sterling at YouTube a couple of years ago, or at, uh, come on, no, bleh, at VidCon a couple of years ago. She was talking, um, and she shared about how, you know, she had learned to play the violin and did all this classical music, and it was okay. But when she found music for contemporary songs that she could play with the violin, it just it excited her about creating music. And I was like, yeah, that's how I feel about art. Yeah, you can draw the bowl of fruit, but if the bowl of fruit doesn't make you excited, find out what it is it does. Not to say that you shouldn't draw the bowl of fruit to learn what the bowl of fruit has you to learn, but you don't have to stay with it. Do I make bookmarks? Yes, I actually have some. I don't have them up on my shop. I sell them at conventions, um, but I have made my artwork into to bookmarks. My daughter wants me to tell you she loves this piece. Well, thank you. Tell your daughter thanks for the encouragement. I'm glad she likes it. Um, yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to switch over to color pencils, which means I have to unbury them. I have been battling with trying to figure out how to store my color pencils because I have so many of them. I'm going to need to do a video on it, but... I had them in cups before, but you just can't see them in cups. So it was um, challenging, but I think now I might have it figured out. I have them in little storage drawers, but I need to get more. All right. Also, this is the part of the video where I'm going to have to start sharpening things. So I'll give you headphone warnings before I sharpen them. So I'm going to be sharpening this pencil. So if you're wearing headphones or you have your volume turned up uh, kind of higher, um, you want to turn it down for just a second because I'm going to sharpen my pencil. And it's very loud. So in three, two, one, here we go. Oops. And again. There we go. Okay, you guys can go back to normal volume. See, I give you guys warnings about these. Maybe not, you know, metallic paint warning, but you know, you guys were paying attention. I can imagine you guys, as I do, listening to live streams while I'm like cleaning things and all of a sudden there's this huge loud racket. Don't do it for baby. It wasn't too loud. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> That's the only problem about doing live streams with, with color pencils is you always, one tip with using color pencils is keep a really good point to them. Um, but then it's just constant sharpening. And I like to use an electric sharpener because it just, it, um, one big complaint people have with Prismacolor color pencils is that they, um, when you're sharpening them, the lead constantly breaks. And I found that to be very true. In fact, I almost gave up on Prismacolor pencils because it just, I would buy a pencil and seriously, I would go through half of it and it would just keep breaking. And I could, I could never get it to hold a point. And I finally went back to the art store and was going to return the new batch of pencils that I bought. And she asked me what kind of sharpener I use. And I just used a handheld, you know, just like, and she says, go get an electric pencil sharpener. She says, it'll wear the pencil sharpener out faster, but it will save you in the long run on um, your colored pencil points. And it did. I think it's maybe one time out of 20 that it'll break the tip off, where it was like one time out of 20 that it wouldn't break the tip off before. So, And I've had mine. I, I have mine as a... Uh, Exacto brown. See all the stickers? These are all stickers that you guys sent me. Um, and I've had it for going on five years now, maybe even longer than that. And it's still going strong. They say that it wears it out faster, but 
And I'm still plugging along. It's probably very full. Yeah, that's why it was sounding weird. Have I ever used Color Soft? No, I haven't. The only two name brands of artist quality color pencils that I've used is um, Prismacolors, and then I have a 12 pack of Faber Castell. And I always have people asking me to try out the different brands, and I would love to, but it's an investment to one to get a newer brand, and then. <laughs> After a while, you know, you know, if I used all these different brands, I would have so many different art supplies that would kind of become swallowed up in them. So, if a company wants me to try it out and send me some, I'd be glad to give my opinions on them. What is the best thing you've ever made? Or drawn. Um, I really like my timepiece that I did for the YouTube Artist Collective. That was a really fun piece to do um, just because it had a lot of meaning to me. I was really sad to sell it. I was happy but I kind of was hoping it wouldn't sell. <laughs> I was like I want to keep it forever. But it went to a good home. I have prints. What's my favorite instrument? Um, I love the violin. I think the violin is very pretty. I like all music, but violins and um, harps are so pretty to listen to. I like stringed instruments. And for about 3.5 seconds, I tried to learn to play the guitar. I was doing pretty good. I mean, I could play Happy Birthday on the guitar. But it came to a point where I could either practice my art or practice guitar. And I had to choose between the two. So art went out. I still have my, my guitar. But I don't practice very often. It's one of those, oh, I will. One, one day I'll get a schedule and I'll schedule an hour a week to practice. So this is one of my systems for colored pencils. So I have these little trays and I can stack them in like this, which works nice. And I can just rotate them around to however I need them. What size Intuos art tablet would you recommend for a 13 inch computer? Um, well, the size of your like computer screen doesn't matter with if you're getting um, a tablet because um, it's you, you draw on the tablet and then it shows up on your screen. So, I the first tablet that I used is the was the Kind of, I guess, the equivalent of an Intuos. But this was my very first one, which was the bamboo. And it's pretty tiny. But I used this thing for 10 plus years. I loved it. And then I finally, when it finally started getting glitchy, then I moved up to the Cintiq tablet. But, um, yeah, you just kind of go with what feels comfortable to you. So if you like a bigger drawing space to be able to draw larger, then get a larger base tablet. But if you like to draw small, um, then get the smaller one. It's a lame answer, Valerie. Very lame answer. Sorry. What Copic colors would you suggest for somebody just starting out their collection? That is the exact answer, or question that I asked the lady that I bought the Copics from at the Copic booth. 
and uh, she gave me the answer I'm going to give to you, which um, is it's totally your own personal journey. Uh, because ultimately, when you buy a Copic, you don't want to just buy one blue and, and a yellow and, and a green, you know, and a red. Like you would like normal colors. Like if I was buying paints, I would buy all these because then I can mix the paints together to get different shades. Well, with Copic markers, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you can buy them that way. But the way they're meant to be used is... I mean, obviously, I'm drawing this with my Copic markers doing that method, which I'm going to tell you is not the way they're meant to be used. The way they're meant to be used is when you get your yellows, you get three yellows of varying shades of that color or saturations of that color. So I have a Y11 and a Y. They're all upside down. There we go. I'm so a Y11, which is my pale yellow, a Y13, which is a medium yellow, and a Y18, which is a darker yellow. And the reason you would do this is because then you can lay your lighter shades and middle shades and darker shades and get that nice gradient, which is where the magic happens with Copic markers. Um, and I say that for what reason? I don't remember. Uh, so obviously, um, eventually, you're going to need to collect them all because once you get bit by the Copic bug, you just can't stop until you have them all. But you just have to decide what colors do you use most if you do portrait pictures. Then you're going to want to get your skin tones first. Um, if you do a lot of nature scenes, maybe your greens and uh, your blues. Um, so yeah, it, there's not a real solid answer. I should probably do a video of like, if you had to buy 20 markers, which ones would I recommend? But that would take me some time to kind of narrow that down to which Copic markers I would do. Okay, I want to go with When did I start YouTube? Um, four years ago, I think it was. But I actually, I, okay, no, it would have been longer than that. Four years ago is when I made the switch to doing YouTube as my job. Um, so I think I had my channel for a good year and a half before that. And then about a half a year, so about a four and a half years ago is when my channel really started, I started really putting a lot of time and effort into my channel and um, it really started to make progress. Yeah, I've been working with the channel for about five to six years and it's been actually productive and updating regularly for um, four years now. I redraw a picture that you posted in a video from YouTube like one of my earlier videos I've been thinking about doing that doing a recreate this video and it's funny some of the earlier videos that I posted are still one of some of my most highest viewed videos but like the camera was not nearly as good. I hadn't learned about lighting, so there was horrible cast shadows. Majority of the time I had the camera angle wrong, so all you saw was my knuckle drawing. And some of the comments from people were like, this video is so, so bad. I'm like, I know, <laughs> but I can't like take them off because they're kind of the ones that bring people to my channel. <laughs> so 
if they could survive the horrible video in itself and actually check out my channel to see how I've progressed in my video editing. Will I sing, please? Generally, don't sing. Every once in a while, I'll break out into musical numbers, but I can't just do it on this bus. <gasps> So has anybody else been watching April the Giraffe, who has not yet had her baby? Last couple of days I've switched, I mean I'm still checking in with April the Giraffe, but there's another live stream of um, two feral cats that are having babies. They're not super feral actually, they're very friendly cats that have, were rescued from a feral cat colony and, and brought to a safe place to have their babies. One well, had her babies last night. It's so exciting. I don't know why I tell you that. It's because I have kitten fever now. I want to go get some kittens. I want to rescue cats. Alright, let's get on to this. Let's go with this color here. How are my chickens? Probably hungry because I haven't gone out and fed them yet. Really, they just want to get out and eat worms. So we have them in a coop to keep them safe from all the wild critters. And then we let them out during the day. But then they started going and hiding their eggs in the bushes of the neighbor's yard. So we put them on curfew. And we can't go out until they, until they lay their quota of eggs. Do I have chickens? Yes, I have five chickens. No, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six chickens, all hens. If you follow me on Instagram, I did a video uh, with them. I was sitting on the back porch and they all came running up to me and like poking their nose at my phone camera. So I took a video of them, which was funny. They're funny little chickens. Okay, I'm going to sharpen this pencil, so if you're wearing your earphones or earbuds, um, I'll just let you know. Turn your volume down in three, two, one. Right. Now we're returning to our regular scheduled volume. I'm not sure, but I think my sister's up to mischief. I can't read all the comments, but I sense mischief. I have to get a moderator to protect me from my own sister. How sorrowful the days are. What do I do when I don't have inspiration? Um, there's a lot of things that I do. Um, I think every artist deals with the days that you just don't know what to draw. So sometimes I just won't draw that day. 
I work on something else. There's always business work that I have to do that I put off because I want to draw. So on the days that I don't feel like drawing, I might do that. But if I really want to draw, but I'm just not inspired, I find things that inspire me. So I'll go for a walk um, or I'll look at other people's artwork that super inspires me. The last artist showcase video that I did, I think it was Monday's video. Oh my goodness, I loved that one. There were so many amazing pieces of art in that one. I was super inspired after going through all that art and editing that video. So, yeah, I like to take inspiration from all different, different places. What do you guys do to find inspiration? Have I ever tried animation? Yeah, I have. I have a couple different videos with little clips of animation in them. I want to do more. It just takes so long to do animation. <laughs> like, even just like a five, ten second animation can take hours to complete. Um, I think the last animation I did was for the intro video that I did for this channel. So if you want to see how I did that one, I think there's a link to it in the description of this video. You can go and check that out. That The style that I used for that one actually was the quickest animation style. And it was probably one of the easiest ones that I've done. So I was, I was really excited about trying that out. It's not your normal traditional hand drawn I mean animation like where you draw one picture and then you draw it again where you move it slightly. Um, it's kind of a, a different technique you um, well you can watch the video and see for yourself. Be better than me explain. All right, I'm going to sharpen this pencil. so watch your eardrums in three, two, one. <laughs> There we go. You're safe now. So did I draw this horse? Yes, I did. Um, this is for a coloring pack that I have on my Etsy shop. So I drew this horse in several different patterns. Where did I put the pattern? So first I did a just plain horse. And then, I know these are kind of small, but then I did several different patterns. So there's this one, which is the Flora. Um, this one's music, this one's rainbow, and then there's patterns. So last year I had given myself the challenge to create a new digital coloring page each month. So I had a brand new um, coloring page at the beginning of each month that I would premiere. <clears throat> so it was so always so something I was always working on. And so since it's not a challenge this year, I haven't been making them as much as I had and I just felt good to make a new coloring page. So if you want to check out the coloring pack on my Etsy shop, there's uh, I think a link to that is in the description of this video as well. So okay. Um, I'll switch over to a different brand. So I do have some Winsor Newton markers. I usually color with my Copex, but I do have a couple sets of Winsor Newton, but this one's a nice neon, I think. I want to make these bubbles neon.
Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it just pops that color. One thing about coloring is sometimes we want to fill everything up with color and we forget that it's okay to have white in there as well. So some things I'm, I'm just purposely leaving white because I want them to be white. But other things move color. Sorry, sometimes I get going into the details and I'm like, oh yeah, I haven't talked a lot in the last, you know, hour. <laughs> sometimes it's challenging to talk and draw at the same time. So have I finished a sketchbook recently? No, oh, have I finished a sketchbook recently? I launched a personally launched. I personally love your sketchbook tours and have watched the Copic ones many times. I am working on a sketchbook, which is this one here, which is my fan art sketchbook, which I want to fill the whole thing up with fan art. I still have a long ways to go. Have I gotten halfway yet? Yes, I'm finally halfway which I had to do a test page on that one, but I'm getting there. My goal, which I did not meet, my goal was to do it in the month of March to fill it up. It didn't happen, but I got half of it done, which is still faster than I filled up most of my sketchbooks. I don't generally sketch in sketchbooks as much as I want to. Um, I need to do it more, though. Okay. And I will definitely do a sketchbook tour when I get done with it. Yes. Level feel. I love sketchbook tours too. They're one of my favorite things to see from different artists to see you know, what they've been creating. And I don't know, sketchbooks are such a, a personal thing that it just helps you kind of just see into the, into the mind of the artist a little bit more. It's a little bit more raw. In fact, I just got um, a sketchbook in the mail from uh, Monique Renee, um, who is one of the YouTube Artist Collectives. She did a collection of all of her Inktober drawings. And oh my goodness, I've just gotten to flip through it a couple of times, but it's just 
beautiful. I love it. I'll have to show it on my... I'm going to do a collection of all the art from other artists that I've collected and purchased and do a little video showing those. Um, so I have to have that one in there as well. Okay. I think I want to do some metallic. So I have these two metallic ink gel pens that sometimes work, sometimes don't. But let's try try. Okay. I don't like to work near color pencil, so. Can I do a tutorial of a dog or wolf in human clothing standing up? Kind of like Grandma from Little Red Riding Hood? I don't know. That's the first time I've ever had that request. So I will put it in my request box. And generally what happens with requests is I choose the ones that get the most requests. So, um, so if I get that request from several different people, I might do it. <clears throat> kind of sounds like a Zootopia thing, which would be kind of a fun video. It was such a fun movie. So these aren't metallic paints. They're metallic pens. Let's see if you guys can see. So shiny. Something, 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 something. Hey, my grandma. It's so shiny. The silver one's way more shiny than the, the gold one. <clears throat> I just got these actually from the Dollar Tree, so they're not that great of a brand, but they work. They do the job, I guess. Kind of. Alright, now I want to come in with some black. Because black is a color too. I'm going to come in with my multi liner. Fill up some of these places, just some nice black solid colors. I'll just help some of these things just to pop out. What about a tutorial on castles? That'd be super fun. I am not good at architecture. It's not my gifting. But the castles are fun to, to look at and to try to draw. You could probably do one on like drawing a cartoon castle. I've been working on this one project which requires me to do some architecture work. Oh, that's the hardest thing of the whole project. Creating buildings that look interesting.
Can I do a butterfly tutorial? Um, I'm trying to think if I've done one before. I would think I've done one before, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. I will go back and check. And if I haven't, I will definitely put that on my list because that sounds like a fun tutorial. I know I've done several different pieces with butterflies in them, but I don't know that I've actually done specifically a tutorial on butterflies. Green. was my favorite Disney character. Um, throughout time, my favorite Disney character has been Ariel. Um, in recent times, um, Rapunzel has vastly zoomed up there. Um, yeah. I think Rapunzel because I relate to her because she likes to art. I like to art. She has long hair. I have purple hair. Yeah. I have tried to do a how to draw a peacock tutorial and she never turns out well for me. I don't know why. I keep. I there's several videos that I've done that. Um, I've recorded and tried to do, but if it doesn't meet the standard that I want for a video, then I scrap it. And that one has been one that I have scrapped many times. I don't think it's ever made it to the light of day. So this was a Windsor Newton metallic marker, which is almost dried out. A little bit of juice left in it. All right, I'm going to go in with my blue. sharpen this so earbud wearers be warned to three two one I do like Moana too she's I think going to be jumping up there I usually let characters rest a little bit um, like for favorites because when I first see a film I'm just very excited about it um, and I want them to be my favorite character. And then after a while, I mean, I still might like them, but they might not, you know, still hold up as much of a favorite of, of, of mine as they were. So I always let their movies rest a couple of years and see if I still like them as much. So that's why Rapunzel's finally taking, taking the lead beginning to take the lead in favorite characters but Ariel will always have like a soft sentimental spot of favoritism like Tinkerbell too because she's cute I 
I've ever done a tutorial on drawing a rabbit. Yep. I've got a realistic rabbit and I think a cute rabbit tutorial. Last time I checked, I had over 600 videos, which is pretty crazy. I try to keep them categorized in like playlists and stuff so that makes it easier for people to find ones that they're looking for, but it can be hard. Have I ever thought about doing videos on different outfits, like drawing different outfits? I have a, I take them by theme, and so I have, I think, a video on drawing a school uniform, um, drawing a sk skirt, dress, Hmm, did I do one on pants yet? Do one on shoes? Can't remember if I've done hats yet or not. I'm slowly trying to work through the uh, different clothes that people wear. Okay, I'm going to apply some shading here. And I also like some here. I'm gonna try it with a BB20. pencil to add some highlights. Just to kind of give a little bit more dimension to the horse. And then I think we're almost done. Which just actually took longer than I thought it was going to. Do I have any art, nature, and animal reference books that I would recommend? Um, yes, I do. I'm trying to remember the name of them. I have some. Um, hmm. I can't remember who made them. Ask me that question in, in a comment of like my last uploaded video so I can reply back to the comment because I can't reply back to live stream comments. After the stream is over, all the live stream comments get erased. So either come back to this video later and comment on it, and I'll try to answer and, and, and give you the title of the books. Because there's a really good ones. They you have to pick, you know pick your focus. Um, they do. I have um, some on birds and some different plant life and. Um, but they just do a photo reference of all the animals. They're just, just they're a little pocket size. They're really nice. And there's a lot of places online you can go and just look at photos too. But I understand wanting to have like that book right next to you because you can you know take that with you or work along with it. Another thing I would do is get just like a regular notebook and then go through old magazines and if you find pictures that you think oh that's nice um clip them out if that's okay you know like you know if it's your mom's magazine don't be clipping her magazine or the library or something i ripped it from a library um and then glue it into your notebook and then um it's like kind of your artist photo reference book that you personalize so i have one that i created for horses and um, other animals. I have one that I've created for people. So um, great bird ones um, are, are the magazine Birds in Bloom. It has a lot of really great just backyard birds, which is really fun. Yeah. Okay. So the next step is to kind of try to clean up the edges with some white gel pen. 
in places that kind of have put it out too much. I'm not super worried about it because this sticker is just for for my fun use. But I'm just going to clean up some of the edges. Yay. And then we'll let this kind of dry a little bit. And then we will... I will put some contact paper on it to, to kind of seal in in the design, kind of protects it. You don't have to put contact paper on top of these stickers, um, but if you want to put it on something like, because I'm going to probably put this on my one of my sketchbooks, it just helps protect it. So if I were just because this is the it's a sticker paper, so the stick sticky on the back that I can peel off, but this top part is just like computer printer paper, so. Especially with the colored pencils, if things smudge it, it's gonna, it can tend to smear the, the colored pencil around a little bit, or if water gets on it, it'll definitely not go well. So just using some um, contact paper and putting it over top of it just seals it in, keeps it all pretty cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is. Change my board. So I have a little cutting board that I can cut on and take things on. Grab my scissors. No. Okay. Well, let's see. I have an exacto knife. That would be a fabulous thing to know where it is right now. Hmm. Wonder where I put that exacto knife. Exacto, where did I put it? Pardon me, you guys, while I look for tools that I probably should have found before I started the stream. But I didn't think about it, because I thought it would be right there, because I always put things back exactly where they're supposed to go when I'm done using them, right? Don't we all? I think when I last used my exacto knife, because it should be there. Oh, it is there. Never mind. <laughs> exactly where I put it. Sorry, that was loud. That was me throwing things around. All right. So I'm going to use my phone to hold things down a little bit. So this is the clear contact paper that's transparent. So I'll just lay that down and just cut around the actual paper. If you use an exacto knife, you use it with caution so you don't exacto knife your finger off. But that wouldn't be fun. And then you want to make sure that your picture is all free of any dust or hair or anything like that. And then we just peel this off and you want to try not to touch the contact paper or let the contact paper obviously touch itself because then it would stick to itself and then the best way to not get air bubbles in it is to kind of fold it up like this and then place it in the middle and then gently just let it kind of fall down on top of itself and then from the center push it out like that and generally you can get it on there where there's no air bubbles so if you go like this and spread it, then any air that's traveled, trapped here has to travel all the way to the end before it's pushed out. But if you can go from the center out, it has farther to travel, and it will get less air trapped in there. And you push it in really good and tight. All right. 
Now you want to do this before you cut your sticker out. So if you're going to cut it, especially in a shape, lay your contact paper over it first, and then you can cut it out. Otherwise, you'll have to cut it twice to make sure that the contact paper and the sticker paper itself matches up. You can do it with a knife just by you know, peeling this up like that and then right out the knife. You can do it with the scissors by peeling it up and then cutting around it. <clears throat> but I find I get a better cut using an X-Acto knife. I get exacto what I'm wanting, which hopefully is not a cut finger. And when I cut, I generally um, leave a good margin of white around the edges. But you can get totally crazy in your cutting and get right up in there. Just kind of what you want your sticker to look like. I think it, I like a sticker with a nice little white border to it. Sorry if I can't get to the comments. This is definitely one of those places you don't want to take your eyes off of what you're doing while you're cutting. Because at best you'll end up cutting your picture, but at worst you'll end up cutting yourself. So All right, now comes the magic. Peeling your paper out. And there we go. Oops, a little bit right there. There we go. There she is. I think it turned out good. Yay.
so there we go. So now you can take this and just stick it on whatever you want to put it on. Or just keep it as a sticker that you never stick on something. Which is kind of like getting a toy and never unboxing it. But, so is your cap. Back on your exacto knife so you don't slice your hand. So there we go. Oh, well that was fun. <laughs> Alright, so what's going on in the chat? Did I miss anything exciting? I feel like I miss, missed something exciting. I poked my eyes up for a second and it looked exciting. Maybe not in a good way. But yeah. So I'll just remind you guys to be kind to each other in the comments. And people can have different opinions from you. And that's okay. But we don't get to beat up people in the chat for having different opinions. So it's my word of, of advice or asking. Just be kind to people. All right. Well, I was planning on coloring the second one, this blank one here. But this guy took so much longer than I thought that I think I'm not going to have time to do this right now. So what I'm going to do is after this stream is over um, and, it, and it gets posted back up to uh, the channel again and you can put comments in that get saved, go ahead and uh, write in the comments a theme for this for this horse and we'll see which theme is the most popularly requested like it could be like a, a night sky it could be a, a storm it could be an ocean theme it could be a candy theme whatever you guys become creative but don't do it in the comments right now while the video is live um, wait till this stream has been reposted so that I can see your comments and um, yeah I'll take it from there and I'll see about making it like a time-lapse video for later on this week so I think that would be fun so um, in closing uh, just in case you guys missed it these are for um, these were some sample ones I'm, I'm gonna take pictures of these for my Etsy shop so if you're interested in getting some of these for yourself um, you can purchase the digital download and be able to print them off just you can print them off on just regular paper to do some you know fun coloring with I printed them off on label paper to make them into stickers which you could definitely do that as well um, but I leave, left a link for that in the description box of this video so yeah I think I think I'm done and I'm well overdue to go have lunch so that's what I think I'm going to do so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me well I sat here quietly and drew <laughs> ignoring you all for half the time um, yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun little live stream. It was fun to, to chat with you guys a little bit. So, well, thank you guys um, for hanging out. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. So until next time, God bless you guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye, guys.